Hello and uh, welcome to the session about curriculum and lesson planning and teaching. So let's at first review what we have already learned before. So we learned about the learners and the main characteristics. We learned about different hypotheses in teaching and learning. So here you remember that important hypotheses for us are the spiral curriculum, that is how we teach adding bits or information year after year. Comprehensible input is what we are going to teach in this lesson. We need to remember about the effective filter. It's already the lesson and how our students are comfortable or not uh, during the lesson. And uh, while our students are acquiring the language, uh, we do need to remember about uh, making our le lessons uh, interesting and fun. This is this flow of uh, the lesson. So we need to remember about developing our student thinking skills. Uh, uh, we need to remember about uh, uh, bringing our students from shallow passive learning to deep and active learning. And finally, we need to remember about uh, the four phases of learning, but it's closer to the spiral curriculum because uh, we need to remember that our students don't have uh, to learn everything at once especially modern students. And uh, when uh, we remember about all this, uh, we need to need uh, to add uh, our knowledge on motivation, how to bring our students uh, from extrinsic to intrinsic motivation. So for this, uh, this levels of uh, safety and security need to be uh, so the, you have to think uh, uh, about them and uh, they need uh, to be well organized uh, and uh, you also need to bring your students uh, to the growth level when uh, their interest in uh, esteem and uh, uh, learning autonomy brings them to the responsibility for learning. Of course, our goal is... Uh, of course, to teach our students how to produce the language, but also we need to teach them how to be responsible for what they are doing. So uh, you remember that we teach language systems and language skills. For this, uh, no matter what we teach, uh, we need to, to turn it into a skill. And uh, with the three parts, uh, like even four parts, uh, who our learner is, uh, how we teach it, uh, how we develop motivation, and what we teach, uh, uh, now we come to the final stage of our course uh, on how to plan your teaching. So I would advise uh, to look uh, at the whole picture first uh, and uh, to uh, plan the curriculum first uh, then to look at the syllabus uh, the plan for the academic year then to look at the unit and only then to look at the lesson uh, if uh, you do this uh, if you understand uh, how the unit is against uh, how the year is organized, it's much easier for you to focus on certain topics and to skip the topics that could be learned at a more advanced stages. So we start with the curriculum. And here the only advice is to develop your curriculum into the spiral curriculum or the so-called sticky curriculum. 
because uh, that is how uh, the information sticks uh, into our students' hands. Uh, we don't uh, teach in blocks, like block after block, uh, and the blocks uh, are not connected. Because in this case, uh, it sticks well into teachers' hands uh, after they teach it for many years. But it uh, can't stick, the information can't stick into our students' uh, heads. So uh, again, we organize the information into the spiral curriculum. That's very difficult. So it's better to get a textbook which already has it organized. And uh, uh, then we see how the knowledge develops from year to year. Here, it is easy to use the four phases of learning because we understand that our students can't learn everything in one year. And then adding the bits of information, uh, expand this curriculum. After you have the idea on how the curriculum is planned, you go to the, so it's still about spiral curriculum, yeah, and uh, you see that uh, it allows uh, to introduce complicated ideas earlier and uh, go further and further up. So, for example, in interclass, uh, we learn about germs very early, but uh, the information about gerund uh, as uh, a grammar phenomena comes uh, much later. So, but our students know about ing forms uh, and infinitive uh, from the third grade already. So, curriculum and its spiral. Then uh, you look at the whole year. It is very advisable to see that many topics uh, are recycled during the year and uh, there is no need uh, to learn every word by heart. Uh, you can either uh, go back uh, to this part and recycle it uh, or you can ask your students uh, to revise uh, this material themselves. But if you see that uh, this topic uh, for example, difficult topic uh, at level one is opposites, uh, adjectives with opposite meaning. And uh, of course, uh, it's quite difficult to learn them uh, for the students of the first grade at once, uh, but we don't expect them uh, to learn them immediately. So we know that we'll have the whole year of getting back uh, to the topic uh, and uh, uh, our students uh, can uh, reproduce, can produce uh, these words only when they are scaffolded. Uh, they can produce these words uh, only when uh, they uh, uh, only when they see them. And by the end of the year, they will probably be able uh, to know some of them. And uh, by the end of the second or third year, due to the spiral curriculum, they will be able to learn more of them. So after we have looked at uh, the curriculum and syllabus, uh, we can start planning a unit. When uh, we plan the unit, uh, uh, it is very important uh, to look uh, at uh, the whole unit at once uh, and to see what uh, might uh, be difficult for your students uh, for revision. I'm talking about knowledge, of course. Uh, I'm not talking about production or receiving information. So uh, when we see that some knowledge uh, may be difficult for them, it's easier for us uh, either to understand that uh, this knowledge doesn't need to be learned well, we'll go back to it this year, or we'll go back to it next year. And also we can understand what the outcomes of the units are and plan your lessons accordingly. So every lesson, when we start planning it, it's already a part of the unit. 
So, and we plan it not as a standing alone class. We plan it as a part of the unit. What we do in the whole unit, what our outcomes or module, if you like the word module, module is a good word as well, what the outcomes of the unit or module are. So, and uh, then now we can uh, understand what our learners uh, will be able to do. This is a can-do approach. And with this, uh, we plan uh, the lesson. So we plan what we'll teach as a knowledge. Uh, we'll plan how the products, uh, what the production of this knowledge will be. And uh, we also plan uh, assessment or evaluation at the end of the class. Uh, if we look at uh, the two common plans, uh, some of them may be more teacher-centered uh, yeah? and some of them may be uh, more learner-centered uh, because uh, in the learner-centered classroom, your learners uh, will, uh, according to to what uh, to you feel as a teacher. Your learners uh, may do many things by themselves. Uh, yeah? So they can set tasks, uh, they can make decisions, uh, they can do peer reviews, uh, they can do group and peer work, uh, and uh, they also can do self-evaluation and self-correction at the end of the class. Uh, so you plan the, the lesson according to uh, what you're going to teach. If you are going to focus on knowledge, on the language systems, so then you study grammar and vocabulary, uh, you, you may use flipped learning, you may give this vocabulary to your students to review if you are sure that uh, they have already learned the bigger part of it. Then you plan practice, uh, and here, immediate error correction. Then uh, you try to do the production. And uh, finally, finally, you remember about uh, uh, the transition from surface learning to deep learning. So you teach the knowledge, you do the practice, and you go to the production. If uh, this lesson is a receptive skills lesson, if you want to focus on receiving information, then uh, again, you review grammar and vocabulary, then you use uh, the bottom-up approach uh, for the beginner students, uh, and top-down approach at more advanced stages. Uh, then you read and listen, and again, you do the productive follow-up. You follow up with uh, the production. Uh, when you plan uh, the lesson, uh, which is uh, the productive lesson, uh, which focuses on producing information, then again, uh, you may uh, review the uh, necessary grammar and vocabulary. You may study the models uh, or look at the models, uh, or you may even take these models uh, from uh, what you received from the reading or uh, listening lesson. And uh, you may uh, do the scaffolding first uh, with immediate error correction, and you finally may produce speech uh, and uh, of course here remember about the air correction so uh, i'm not sure that we'll need now to look at what we do with grammar vocabulary and uh, speaking uh, you remember it well if uh, we do grammar and vocabulary it's knowledge uh, so then it's a knowledge lesson and uh, mm -hmm, for the knowledge lesson we need uh, to um, practice, uh, we need to study the knowledge uh, and uh, we need uh, to do the practice. Uh, yeah? So for the receptive skills, uh, we need to go to the knowledge, review the knowledge, receive the skills uh, and produce something. And for productive skills, knowledge, uh, the receptive skills, uh, if possible, 
and only then production. Yeah, I hope that uh, using this uh, lesson templates, uh, using the idea about the unit or the model, and using the idea of a syllabus, uh, you will be able to plan your lesson well. Thank you for your attention and good luck.